trying to find a picture to take it off. Hi. I can oh, hear you. Hi. I just don't. Hey, Amber. Hi. Hello. How fun. fun. <laughs> hey, Amber. Hello. Hello, Bobby. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's Tuesday. Time for some therapy. It's cooking <laughs> therapy time. <laughs> We have some fun projects today, so we're excited to share with you guys. Let us know where you're watching from, how you guys are doing. You guys are, you know. Yeah, yeah. how's everyone holding up? Hey, Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Jennifer number two, two Jennifers, Belinda. Sherry, is, Sherry. My, Sherry is my sister. Oh, Thank hello, you for Sherry. Attending today. Okay. Welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Amy, hello, hello. Oh, hello, Fabiola. Hi, Fabiola. It's June, gorgeous. Here. That's great. It was not very nice here. Hello, June. Today I brought my car in to get the winter tires off and I had to wear my mittens and my toque. So <laughs> it's cold. Very cold. Very Whoa. cold. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hello, Alyssa, Vicky, Kathy. Wow, you guys. Hi. Hello. Yes, Hi. I know in California the weather is wonderful. <laughs> How is everybody today? Yes, I hope everyone's doing well. Canada is, um, you know, we're deep in our third wave of this memorable uh this will be one for the history books the kids will be <laughs> learning about this for a long time yeah the what to do and the what not to do during a pandemic a worldwide yes exactly pandemic. don't be sorry fabiola i'm so happy that you're having nice weather me too hello amy kathy hey allison yeah ottawa it's uh it's a it's a tough time for ontario right now oh. hello sharon Hello. Hello, everyone. So today, Amy will kick it off. I was first last week, so Amy will kick it off. Well, before we do that, do you, let's tell them about the coffee shop, and let's well, tell them about our class. I yes, mean, your yes, class. yes. So do you have some hey, pictures? Hey, Maxine. Hi, Laura. So every, every week, we've started this a few weeks ago now, we add mm -hmm. the supplies to our uh, gadgets that we use. You guys always mm -hmm. are curious as to where we're getting all of our stuff. So here's the link up on the screen. So that's Amy's link and that's mine. And today, Mar, I put my supply list with one royal icing transfer sheet. So it's together so it wouldn't be confusing. Okay. Everything, everything's in one purchase for you today. And it's okay. discounted to $2 for the 24 hours. Awesome. And so, yeah, so we have all our templates mm -hmm. and digital files and everything, all the backup for the live stream. So if there's stuff that you're interested in, you'll find kind of the backup there. And that's how we kind of like, um, you Support know. Support the live stream habit. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like the expenses, the supplies and everything that, you know, we have to right. kind of purchase. And guys, I, I already bought Mars for today. There's a ton of stuff in there you're going to want. You're going to want to get her um, entire thing for today. So go check it out. And Amy here, do I put up this? Um, yes. Okay. So there is this thing that the Frosting Creators of San Antonio is doing. It's called Virtual Day of Sharing. Um, please make sure that you go like my seriously sweet Facebook page because you can watch my um, that cookie that Mar just put up. That's what I'm doing. The um, take to the skies. It's a we're going to make that balloon out of wafer paper. And that basket has a lot of um, it's got the hand piping basket weave on it. We're going to learn how to make those sunflower pops do your bottom for it. But I actually have a full hour to teach this time. So it will be a really detailed tutorial, completely free. Um, you can watch it live on May 16th from my Facebook page. So make sure you have liked my Facebook page because I'll be putting an actual event up there so that you'll get reminders. So that's, awesome. all, the, that's all the info for that, but it's totally free. And um, just so that you guys, in case you're wondering, this will be available for replay today's live stream as mm -hmm. well as all the previous live streams. So 
you want to get like uh, some info that you say, oh, what did they say? You can rewatch it. All right. Yes. And say, this yeah, that's what I'm making. That's cool, huh? Do you guys like it? Oh, it's um, beautiful. Because I really, um, Mara and I were discussing this, that sometimes you have these like creative stalls, right? And so yesterday I had something else entirely different planned. And then it's, I, I took a walk, you know, I'm trying to get out a little bit more this year. Instead, I remember last year at this time, we were all in complete lockdown. Hey, Amber, thank you. Um, we were total lockdown, right? So I've been trying to get out of the house a little bit more this spring, which is affecting my allergies, but who cares? Cause it's beautiful outside in Virginia and the dogwood tree is our state tree. It's also our state flower. So oh, I, there's a huge, very old one on my street. I'm in an older subdivision and I was like, Oh, you know what? I just bought a mold a couple of weeks ago to do, um, dogwood. So that's what I'm going to do today. Awesome. So well, you think flower is so wonderful, right? Yeah, right. Springtime. So last week I did daisies, right? I'll do dogwoods this week. But um, next week, um, when that creative gene was flowing, finally, I came up with something for next week already. So I've started on it. Anything flower is great because you could use it for bridal stuff. You could use it Mother's yes. Day's around the corner. Yeah, and this day. dogwood in Virginia is really popular for weddings oh, as, a, as a decoration and on cakes. It's because it's our state tree and flower. It's real popular here. Okay. And yeah, no cicadas yet, Karen. I'm good out here. I know we're supposed to have them, but not yet. What is this? I, I know they make a racket. but Yeah, they come out every year. Every 20 years, I think, guys, is that right? I think they come out every 20 years and they are so loud. Um, I, I really don't have anything to compare them to. But the area I'm in 20 years ago, it was so loud here that it was like you had that. Um, what's that ear thing where your ear rings? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I don't know, what it's called, but I know what you're talking yeah. about. The ringing so it's, your like, ear. it's like that all the time. You actually actually had to put on noise canceling headphones where I live to not hear it. So, that, yeah, they're like locusts. That's right, Darla. So, but so far, so good here. And they strip your trees. You have to really worry about whether your trees are going to live the next year. Because really? They, they come out, they eat all the foliage off the trees. Well, it's kind so. of a funny coincidence that it's happening during the <laughs> pandemic. Let's just get everything kind of done. Right, let's have all the plagues. <laughs> but yes, I'm just right. happy, I guess, it's them and not um, frogs. I would not be okay with a plague of frogs. <laughs> yeah, tinnitus or tinnitus? Tin tinnitus, is that tinnitus? how you say it? Tinnitus, I think. All right. So all those fun things. Let's uh, let's. Uh, so let's now do. we're going to do something beautiful, right? So let me yes. um, let's do the camera dance real quick. That's where it's going to stay, right? So I'm going to just make this one really small, and then we'll be on to the dog. Which I think you guys will really enjoy this project. Um, people get really freaked out, Mar, about using. Can you still? Is that okay like that? They well, get freaked your out. Arms in front there, but yes, yes there we go. Is that good? good? Yes, perfect. So this is my finished cookies. And today we're going to combine a couple of techniques. But, you know, I always liked um, because of the store. And I know that I'm coming at it that way all the time for you guys. But I'm just trying to help you get um, better equipped to do things faster, but still have a lot of fun and have a lot of detail. So we'll, of course, start at the um, we're going to start with packaging first. So this is a cookie. Let me just show you on my finished ones. Do you see how much dimensions on this cookie? And because of the time of the year, I did these with fondant. However, if it was winter time, I would have done these with modeling chocolate and they would have been gorgeous in modeling chocolate too. But it's just too hot here already to do that. Um, but you see how deep they are. So this is not something because of how delicate and thin I'm going to encourage you to take the time to get your, um, your leaves on the flower. This is not something I would put in a bag. They're just going to be real fragile. So on this cookie, can you see that we have that lower level and we did some of the drawing, mm -hmm. the fine line drawing around it? We've also used the royal icing transfer template that you'll get today to make these. I'm mm -hmm. going to show you one of the things I really enjoy about cookie projects like this, especially florals, is making sure that everything stays in the same color scheme. So what I have darkened my leaves with is the same dust that I use to do my dogwood edging right here. Because you know how the dogwoods have that darker edging? Mm -hmm. And the, I actually use the same gel that I use to color my fondant. I use the same gel to color white oh, non-pareil. Non so the match. I have, everything will go together well. I, I personally am super sensitive to color. So when something 
Like if you have two really mismatched greens, that's just going to send my, my whatever OCD or whatever into overdrive. Like I won't be able to deal with the cookie. <laughs> Amy, are you showing the wrapping or are you going to at the end or? Um, no, I just want to encourage you. This is a set that I'm putting together for a bridal party. So there's going to be, this is the two plaques that are in there, okay. but then we're going to do the rest of the dogwoods on little rounds. So it'll be by the dozen and they're going to be in one of the flat cookie boxes. I'm going to ask a question that everybody seems oh, to ask is how much are you charging for something like that? Okay. Well, I am in a rural area. So these cookies in my area, I'm not going to be able to get as much as say Amber would be able to get in New York. So <laughs> I, I can only comment on where I'm at. Yes. But this cookie where I am, the larger cookie, um, I would start with pricing in inches, then the add-on of having a royal icing transfer, and then the add-on of having a dimensional flour. This particular cookie right here would be a $6 cookie because it's a really large cookie. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this cookie. So all of my cookies in the set are not all going to be this fancy. Some of them will be just piped right on the cookie like mm -hmm. this part, this wet on wet, and then the sketching, some of them will be like that. And that'll keep those in the 350 range. Mm -hmm. um, but these are super fancy. They have two blooms on, they have the leaves, they have the multi-dimension. So this is what I, when I talk to you about feature cookies, this is what I'm talking about. A couple of cookies within the set that are just something super fancy, something they want to do photographs with, you know, things like that. And then there's ways to set that price and then work backwards from there to make a little bit plainer cookie, which I'll show you before in one of the cookies. I have a couple extra blank cookies today we're going to work with. OK, so let me pop these out of the way on your supply list. If you get that supply list today, everything is clickable links. The photos on there now in your picture on your supply list, the molds are aqua colored um, the one they I think they come in lots of different colors, but this is the actual length. This is for the dogwood. This actually let me let me tell you about this mold because this is a more expensive mold than I usually tell you guys about. But this does lots of flowers. This two piece set comes like this. It also has the groove in the back in case you're making things for um, wedding cakes and you need to do the wire stem. Hey, Nadine, um, you would use you can use this area to work with your wire things today. This is an impression mat if you just want to do um, in, do a fondant roll on here and then cut your flower out with a fondant cutter. We're going to just be using this piece today because I'm going to be doing it by hand. But these mats, they do daisies, they do dogwoods, they do sunflowers, they do ivy, they do calla lilies. This one mat does all of those flowers. That's so awesome. If you, yeah. if you do cakes, this is actually a really good value. I always try and steer you towards the mats that are less expensive in case you don't like them or you're not going to actually use them more than one time. But I have this because um, I built it into a project that I'm working on, a cake that I'm actually making. So it, I have it and I know that I will use it again because now that I've used it for that project, I found that I really, really liked it. Um, Amy, is that, that a bug body? That, mm -hmm. uh, that, that in the mold there, on mm -hmm. the song. is that a bug body? Is that like a dry? Uh, uh, here, this is for a calla lily. This is to make that centerpiece. Oh, I thought it was a dragonfly and body. Yeah, it actually, it, you could use it for lots of things, but today we're going to use the center. This, I'm going to show you what this looks like. I'm going to show you how to make one of the flowers. And then we're going to talk about some other things. But I have a lot of these things made for you. But oh, wow. I do. I do think it's important to show you what they look like, well, at least do one flower for you. So mm -hmm. this is the flower dried and set up. And do you see the center of this one, Mar? Can you see that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that's actually made with the mold. So if you want to do it with the mold, you can. But you know, I really like having the candy and I really like things to look realistic. So your royal icing transfer template today is the right size circle to work with this particular mold to make these little centers because I found that when I put these on the cookie, this was much, much more realistic to what an actual dogwood bloom looks like to use the candy. Plus candy's up my alley. I love that. That's one of my favorite things to work with. So let's get started and do one bloom. And today I'm just using basic fondant. I don't have trouble with these molds. I've never had trouble with them, but I think it's because of my climate. 
Other people that do, um, you will want to have some cornstarch handy and just a little brush, just something small like this, some cornstarch and dust your mold before you start. Um, if you're going to be working with modeling chocolate, you're going to want to have a refrigerator handy because you'll really work that chocolate down into the grooves. And then what you'll do is just pop it into the fridge for a minute or two and before you turn it out. So I just start with really small balls. And I'm basically one of the things that scares people about this particular flower mold is that it's not a very precise edge around your flower. But when you're making cakes or cupcake toppers, that's what people are looking for so that they can all have a slightly different appearance. And I'm working with gloved hands because I just don't like the texture of fondant on my hands. Okay, so do you see how easy that is, though? A little tiny bit of fondant. I've worked it until it's really pliable. I'm setting it in the center of my flower. This is something you do have to play with, but honestly, you'll make about three or four of these and then you'll have it down. So don't be afraid of this project. So I'm going really thin because dogwood leaves are almost so thin that you can see through them. If you're not comfortable doing that, stay on the thicker side. It's not going to make the cookie look bad or anything. It won't make your cake toppers or cupcake toppers look bad. Um, it just, they are a thinner flower. So I'm going a little bit thinner. But don't feel like you have to do that if you're not comfortable with that. And let me show you a little trick when you're using these molds. So I'm doing two fingers together. And what it's doing is creating a natural ridge in the center of my flower. Let me lift that. Can you see that mm. by doing that? And that's going to help you when you go to flip this out. The other thing it's doing by not putting too much fondant in my mold, because I can always go back and add to it. I can get to this paper thin consistency and I can get that ruffle on the side of my little flower here. And you can see what I'm doing just a teeny tiny bit. If I were going to make a whole bunch of these guys, what I would do is make one flower that I knew I was going to destroy. I would make this one flower. I'd take it out. I would weigh it. And then I would just go ahead and pre-cut a whole bunch of little balls that would make the exact size flower. So I wasn't having to do a bunch of scraping when I was creating my flower. I'd have, if I I'm, uh, I'm looking at you, you said you you were wearing gloves because you don't like the feel of fondant, but I'm imagining the technique you're demonstrating, well, it would have fingerprints if you were barehanded. It, I think it would. And I also think it doesn't heat up as fast when I have gloves on. You know, I use in your list today, you've got a couple of things. Um, I put fondant. Let me look at this and tell you. You have fondant on your supply list for today, but I also put up three new things, guys, that are like Amy's favorites list, things I wished I'd known about right when I was starting out. And in one of those lists, it's like spring and summer um, fondant molds. And in there, I put up a link to fondant for you for modeling chocolate and to the stuff that you can order on Amazon where you make your own molds. So if you have something like a brooch or something and you want to make your own impression, I put that mm -hmm. up there. I think I also put gloves on today's supply list. Gloves are one of the things that during the pandemic, they've gotten completely out of control here. Okay. So I don't want to, hmm? You mean the price? Yes, absolutely. They, they, they're almost four times as expensive as they used to be. So I'm glad that I'm a supply hoarder because I had all of that stuff stocked up before it started. Okay. All right. Now this is a much heavier mold than the ones that we talked to you about, like on AliExpress. So typically what I do is I, I adhere it to a little piece of parchment. You can see that sticking. And then I start to work it out this way. So you can see it's barely starting to come out. So I'm just going to take my finger, just a little nudge and where just a little bit of peeling. You've got to be really gentle with these. Whether you do them in modeling chocolate or fondant and just let the weight of it start to pull out of the mold and fall over your fingers. And you guys can see, right, how pliable that is. Isn't that beautiful? So let's set that to the side. To be using this, but if you wanted to, you could use this, okay? Now, in your template today, you're going to get this six by six template. This is sized properly to make the center for this flower. So I'm just putting a little piece of parchment over this. I forgot to bring home the cello bags that I normally use to do this. I've got a thick consistency in my little green, which is also on your supply list. It's one of my favorite. What green is that? You said olive? Uh, laurel. It's, laurel green. Um, 
uh, laurel. It's by Americolor. And it's one of my favorite springtime greens. It just happens to be absolutely perfect dogwood color. If you went out and held this up to one of the centers on the trees around here, this, this is it. So I'm just, do you see, I'm just making this, it's not, um, it's very thick. It's a toothpaste consistency. I don't want it to settle down, right? I want it to stay like that because I want to go back and add some nonpareils to it. So I colored my nonpareils. I bought a little bag of the dollar bag at Michael's of the white. I poured the entire bag just into a Ziploc or in, you can put it in one of those little sealed food safe um, bags that we put our sprinkles in mm -hmm. if you want to do a smaller quantity, but I'll be using, this will be enough to do my whole order. So I put it in here. I'm using the Laurel by Americolor. I put in two drops of gel and then literally all I did to color this is I started working it around in the bag. Just worked it around. Sorry. Are you guys. Are you guys, guys, enough. Thank you. Are you Sorry. getting an AliExpress delivery? Uh, maybe. Someone's at the door. You know, I tried to come to the house to keep the noise down, right? The telephone from not ringing all that. And now someone's at the door. No one ever comes to my house. I don't they know it's a pandemic. You don't ring people's, people's doorbells. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Those are my little doorbells. <laughs> so this is I found that I'm doing more designs by having this little cookie room at my house, because when I'm bored at night, instead of having to run back up to the shop, I just come in here and do some work just to play with things. So these are fully covered. You can see they're saturated. I left them out on parchment paper overnight to dry because I use food gel, but they're perfectly fine now. So what I'm going to do with those is just pop. Let's pull this tray back over. There's a bead tray listed for you if you'd like to have one of those. Now, look, see, I waited a little bit too long in talking. So let's do this again. If, if it's you really that, not long that it doesn't stick. So yeah, you got to scrape and start over. But I should have showed you how to do this, that coloring first. But you guys get the idea. So then literally, this is it, guys. I just I just coat these. All right, so this is it. I roll it around on here. Now I fully cover them because I'd like for them to adhere. A little tap will not hurt it a bit. Just give it that little whirl there. I'm gonna set this to the side. These are the ones that I did yesterday. So I just did variations of size in case I wanted to get wild and crazy with the size of my flowers today. And I'll show you why in a minute. I made some larger and some smaller, but look how pretty they are. With that shine, they, they catch the shine beautiful. So, you know, I love that. So let's pull our tray back over and then I'm gonna show you how to put the center in and then we're gonna do our cookie real quick. And I say real quick because this is a project that the detail of the project is really in the prep work. On your supply list today, you're gonna see a link that has five or six different sizes of this little silicone tray. This particular silicone tray is the tray everybody was going crazy for at Christmas time to make hot cocoa bombs. So if you were making hot cocoa bombs, you already have something you can use for this project. If you want to be super detailed and super fancy, Wilton sells these, which I also put on the list for you. I do have a set of these, but this is not my go-to. Oh, this yes, yes. I do use these. There's certain flowers I find these super handy for. But for the volume I'm going to make, I would never buy enough of these to do this. And then I'm going to tell you about a free hack. So they in your package, you get three of the, the small and three of the large. So last night I did use these to hang the leaves over to get a certain curve. I did the flowers in this, but listen, you don't have to have all of the things when you first start. Grab an egg carton, an empty egg carton, grab some press and seal, put the pressing part, the sticky part of the pressing seal into your egg carton and start flattening it in and then pulling your, your press and seal over, cover that egg carton, and that will work perfectly fine for you. Take leftover paper towel um, centers, the cardboard center and the paper towel, cut those in half, cover them with press and seal. They're perfect for doing flowers as well, okay? So this is all of the ones that, no, no, no. Oh, guys, hold on one sec. I'm gonna put them in the other room. Hey, go, now. No. So. <laughs> So you guys, I'm going to show again her um, her hot air balloon project she had mentioned at the beginning of the class. If you just joined us, she's going to be teaching a class. 
The date is, I think, on this slide on May 16th. So she asked that you guys go follow her Facebook page. Yes. So, so you get notifications for that. That's a free class. Okay. So and now, now we... the hounds have been uh, captured. You know, they're the... Mar, they're the tiniest dogs. They weigh like six and seven pounds. But now well, they're um, the they... loudest, though. The little. Yeah, that is not going to work for. Um, they can't stay with me. They're going to have to go to their room. I think. So here we have um, flowers that I made yesterday, but it can't get more real life, can it? <laughs> it be, eh? It's no problem. Everybody's, uh, you know. <laughs> so this is one of the larger ones I made yesterday. And you can see how deep it is, which is why I'm encouraging you not to put these into bags. Then this is a lower profile one. So I made lots of different ones. Now, I did not use Tylos powder. If you're going to have these on a the side of a cake, I would strongly recommend if you're doing them in fondant, use Tylos powder because you don't want, this is 24 hours later. And you can see, I can still, this is very pliable. I think that's great for cookies. It will not work on a cake. So make sure that you use some Tylos powder so they're good and stiff so that when you put it on the side of a cake, it stays exactly like you made it which is why it's important to have several different sizes to form your flowers because you don't want all of the flowers to be the same. So what we did on these yesterday, I just basically took my flower and let's pull back up the one we were working on. I want you to see how easy this is. Okay. And I'm taking just a little bit of my Royal icing and I'm taking one of the centers and I'm using the same color royal icing to attach that center so that if it mushes out underneath, you don't have a weird color showing. I'm going to go ahead and use this because my little silicone is full. And basically, I just set my flower in and I played with the leaves until I looked at it and I went, okay, that's how I want that to dry. Now, if you get it in there and you can't move it around, just grab your scribe. You can very gently move that around and then work with the leaves. Go ahead and bend those into whatever position you want them to be in. Curl some of them in. Just, you know, play with them before you do a really fancy cake order or a whole bunch of cupcakes. Um, I think on cupcakes, people really don't notice as much. They like it to be very different, um, <laughs> Jeremy. But on, on something that's going to be on a cookie, try to think detail. Uh, dimension, but keeping it low profile so it doesn't break, right? That's what we want to be concerned about on a cookie. So then I use that same texture mat and there was a, the side that had the impression. Do you see this? It came with this really nice area to make leaves. And this is a large mat, Mar. This is like a four and a half inch, well, five inch mat. Well, the thing that's great about the particular thing is that you can make a leaf in so many sizes. Usually yes. it's like a just one specific size. This yes. is very... And so I think people are afraid of these mats initially because they're not formed, right? You can do whatever you want. But I think what you're going to find if you get one of these mats and practice with it, this mat's actually easier because you can make so many different things. All of these same leaves. Can you see all these different sizes? yes. yes. All of that, all made with that same mold. So great, huge sizes for cakes, beautiful little detail sizes with the veining to do the um, cookies today. So we're going to move this out of the way for now. But basically, we did our flour. We made the centers using our transfer sheet. Then we came back and we did our leaves. I allowed all of these things to dry for about six hours. And then I'm going to show you that little trick really quick for how I did that coloring. On your supply list today, I was using things that I already had. And you guys know I like to mix colors. Now, we're not going to be in fondant anymore, so I'm going to ditch the gloves. These cookies are not being consumed. This is just for the purposes of our video. They'll be photographed, and then they will they will um, have a sale, at, a sale at funeral. I like to do something fun with them, you know, like people that destroy their wedding dresses. I still don't really understand that, but after they have something beautiful, they want to do something with it. But I never use my sample cookies for anyone to eat. So just a little basic brush. And I'm mixing red and purple because I wanted that darkened color. So look what happens when you do the red and purple color dust from Wilton. It's this beautiful crimson color. So yes, there are colors out there by different places that are actual crimson color. You could just buy one of those, but I probably only use crimson twice a year. Christmas and then springtime for things like this. So I don't need a whole tub of it that's going to last me for 20 years. So I'm just mixing 
my red and my purple. And you see, I get that nice color. Let me show you on the paper towel. Mm -hmm. Amy, and then, how did you cut your leaves? Did you mention, did you use a cutter to cut them or they're all? I, no, up? I just formed them, just playing with them straight on the mat. Okay. And I made different sizes and then squished them up. Um, so you see on the flower, how we highlighted the edges. This, I was used, going by a photograph. I pulled a photograph up from Google after I came back in the house and decided this is what I wanted to work on. Do you see how easy it is to add this color? I know that you know that I love glitter, but this really isn't a project that calls for it. So this is just straight out color dusting, petal dust. This is not nothing glittery in this. Um, it's much more realistic. I really wanted it to have that yes, natural right. look like a real flower for what these um, what these practice flowers are for. So well, if you're planning on making Amy's project, you should really make your flowers much in advance, like before yes. you start your cookies so that you know you can have that done and then be stress-free when you're actually doing all your final assignments. Yes, because you see how much time we've just spent doing that, right? But watch how quick our cookie comes together. Our cookie is fabulously easy. Once you have all your bits and pieces done, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to work today on the large plaque. And this is just a basic plaque cutter. You can use any size you want. The set that I will end up making will have several of these, a few of the little squares, that have that similar design. And then we're going to have some scallops, um, scalloped edge circles in their set. So let's yeah, pull Somebody wanted to see those. Did you not make a prototype yet of your round one? No, I did not. Okay. Um, th this, this yesterday, I was just trying to figure out how to get it done. Yes. And so anyway, um, this is a low profile flower that has a lot of twirling on the leaves. So I know that I, after I did it, my plan was just to have one flower on each cookie. But after I did it, it really needed to look like it looks on the branch. It really needed another flower popping out right behind it. So mm -hmm. this is half, this is half of a flower that was already made. I just took two of the leaves off and slid it in behind it because this to me just looked much more full like a dogwood branch actually would. So well, the thing is, is then you can use it on two cookies. Yes. So it didn't really, it's not going to make me that much more work to have that little bit of extra detail. Um, and I think that they're, the customer's really going to appreciate it. They, they are really going to love these cookies. So this is how you start placing your cookie because you don't want an exact template because you don't want them to all look the same. So I'm trying to teach you ways to take something and look at it and then make it your own. So looking at this cookie and knowing I wanted to do that wet on wet technique, Normally I sketch on cookies in yellow. I'm doing it in black for camera because black could bleed through because we're going to be doing some ivory icing. But I know that I want another dogwood to look like it's popping up up here. And I know that the leaves would roughly be like this, right? And I know that I could put a lower level leaf here so you can see what I'm sketching. This would be the white. This is going to be green. This is going to be white. I kept your color palette super simple so that you could see you don't have to have 16 colors to make something gorgeous, right? So I'm adding my white leaves there. I'm going to go ahead and put one more white leaf over here. I don't actually think you'll see this third leaf um, since I'm planning on adding the second flower. But let's say you add the one flower and the cookie's gorgeous. You have to learn when enough is enough on a cookie as well, right? So if you get plan that you're doing it exactly like this with one flower but then if you don't like it you have time to add your second flower right so i'm just going to quickly scoot this flower off this is so easy you guys you're going to love this so i made a nice ivory i did not go bright white because dogwoods have kind of an ivory look to them but they're not dark ivory right so i just made a light a little tiny the faintest amount of ivory and what i'm going to do quickly is just do these leaves Okay, and I, you can see that, right? I'm on camera. Yes. It's not fancy because this has to have that really artistic look where it all blends together. It's kind of And weird. I'm not doing it as wet on wet, which means I would have done the whole background in blue and then come back and added this because it's just too much icing for the cookie. So mm -hmm. what I found worked easier was to go ahead and do this bit first. I'm going to go ahead and add my leaf next. And I just have a paper towel off to the side where I'm purging the tips of the bags. But I'm going to add this green immediately. So when my husband comes home, you guys, and he says, so how did it go with the girls out? Should I have put them up? I'm going to have to admit that they were very bad. That they were it went into attack mode with the mailman. 
you'll forgive them. Yeah, and poor Corey, because he's fantastic. If you guys ever watch the boxes, he goes out of his way to bring me things here if I'm not at the store. So it was Oh, that's very, yeah, that's very thoughtful. Yeah, and then he'll see the live stream later and be like, whoops. So let's go ahead. Oh, sorry. Let me purge the tip on this. It's been out for about 10 minutes. So I just want to make sure that I don't start with something um, out of whack there. So this is just a nice outline. I'm going to outline the whole cookie. Again, if you're a beginner, please don't stress over this project. I promise you, if you just practice with the flowers, the part that I'm doing right now is the really easy part about this. I'm just about an eighth of an inch back of the cookie, just in case my icing gives a little spread. But this part, you guys, this can be very free form. Okay. So please don't worry about it being exactly the shape of a flower because we're going to do that sketching on it and it gives it that really cool artistic look. So it's a chance to really do something unique on your cookie. Now, because this is a bigger cookie, I think this is a four and a half or five inch cookie. Um, I don't flood around the outside. I do sections and keep working my way down the cookie. Um, and today specifically I'm doing that because my icing seems to be setting up really a little bit faster than normal. So what I'm doing is just working in sections to keep the wet parts touching. So it has time to heal itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Normally I'd have this on a turntable and I would be just outside edge working towards the center. That's how I prefer to do my flooding. But for today, we're going to work like this. Now, you notice I didn't make the whole cook, the whole flower on the under part of this cookie. You don't need to because we just want it as a little pop out detail. Right. So it just gives us a little more attention to the cookie. It's something it's really nice when you're at a fancy party or a wedding, a birthday and someone picks up the cookie and you hear them exclaim, how'd they do that? How did they get that many levels on here? How is this? How can you see all of that like that? And it's just the planning. It's the planning part of all of it, which is why I encourage you to sketch, even if you think you're not a person that draws well, okay? Sketching is becomes important more for the planning and marking out your colors. Obviously, this would not look well, not look good if I had done it on a green background, right? It looks nice because we've got this beautiful Wedgwood blue behind these muted colors, the laurel and the ivory, right? So it just gives it a little more umph, I guess. Let me pull that where it's not right in the glare of the windows. Now that cookie, remember how when we started this, we placed our dogwood. We want to put this on while the cookie's wet. So I'm just going to touch it down in there. I let it go right into the fondant and then I try not to move it. You can attach it later when it's dry, but then you've got to re-wet everything when you attach it to the cookie. So what I found, I did this two ways. I did the I did the wet on wet, put it in the dehydrator. That's what that little thing is right behind me. I have an extra dehydrator at the house now, but um, I did the wet on wet, completely crusted the cookie, did the sketching to do the outlines on the leaves. But then I realized um, it made a lot of extra icing on the cookie to have to go back and attach the dogwood after everything was dry. So this time we're going to do it like this. We'll let everything crust. Then we'll come back and do the sketching or I will do the sketching and then post the picture. But I want to show you a smaller dogwood that I made yesterday using that same exact mat. Can you see how much smaller this, this little guy is? So I just didn't push the leaves all the way out into the full mat. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just using a little pair of scissors. These are the ones I trim my bag with, so they're good and sharp. And I'm just going to peel off these two little flowers. So I'm going to save this bit, and I'm going to turn this bit because I like the way the leaf is curled. And what I'm going to do here is just pick up this leaf ever so gently. I'm going to slide this in. I'm going to let this come down. And what I'm going to do is take one of my centers that was already made up, I'm going to attach a little of the toothpaste consistency icing. Uh, tweezers would be handy here if you're not comfortable with this. And I'm going to pop that center in, let that leaf come back down. And when this dries, this is going to be one whole large piece here. So you see, I'm just a little bit, don't be afraid to fiddle with this as long as your icing hasn't started crusting. Because what I'm doing is just making sure that things are touching in the right places. 
and making sure my edges are not pushing my cookie off, not pushing my icing off the cookie. So now I, this, I did this on purpose so that you could see the difference in the detail of using the mold to make your dogwood center, which is what's on the right versus taking the little bit of extra time and prepping that center. That, see how much prettier that center is? Isn't that beautiful? Gives so you a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add the leaves real quick. That's all we have left to do. And then that will be mine for today. But I will post pictures for you. So this is one of the leaves I did. I just used that same purple and red mixture that I made from Wilton. A little bit of the dry dust powder. And I just highlighted my leaves. And it ties oh, in. The green, it looks more brown. Mm -hmm. Well, the purple and red together makes this really pretty rust or crimson color. And so uh -huh. it looks, it all ties together nicely. Yes. So I'm just going to take, you saw I dropped that, right? My icing is still fresh, so no big deal. I'm able to grab it and push it right back in the cookie. I, I made this one just to see what it would look like really pinched up. Can you guys see how pinched up that mm -hmm. leaf is when I took mm -hmm. it off? So let's see what that looks like. It's great to slide in here. This is the other reason I don't want you to get really worked up about how perfect your petals are, because look at what we just added and how we just changed our cookie. OK, now I do want to put one really large one large leaf on here just to show you. Um, and by the way, this leaf is perfect to make hydrangea leaves as well. So I'm going to take this leaf and just watch how easy this is, because you do one cookie at a time, though, guys, so stuff doesn't set up on you. This has just enough royal icing on it that it's going to adhere to this leaf. But doing a large leaf like this that's set up overnight, it's really dry. So what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to make that leaf come off the cookie to give me even more dimension when this is on a platter, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you one other trick that I learned yesterday from doing these. Um, this is probably more off the cookie than I've ever done before. But do you see right here where this little deal is? If you don't like how that looks where it, we've made our flowers so thin, let me show you a way to change that while it's on your cookie because you obviously don't want to tear this whole cookie apart. So oh let's say you had this flower center, the one that I really like, and you don't like how it looks, just add a little more to it, a little more of your um, a little thinner consistency so it'll run over more like your outline and flood. Use your scribe, work that around just a little bit, and then very carefully go back um, with a baby spoon. You can use your fingers. I prefer to not touch anything I'm putting on a cookie when I'm making it for an order with, with my hands. I just normally have gloves on. I use the baby spoons. Try to stay in the center of that flower. And then use your scribe to just kind of gently give these guys a nudge into the icing. Let that sit. And then in a little bit, you can tip that over and all the extra ones are going to fall off. But we just change the look of the flower again. So you don't always have to go all the way back to the bottom. Do you see how that is? Yeah. And then what we'll do later, we'll just tip that over. I'm not going to do it now because the icing is too fresh. But what will happen is you've created this. And the only thing you're going to need to do is come back with um, your pen, the pen I was just sketching with, the fine point end. And I'm going to do it on the paper towel so you can get an idea. But I literally, once this dried, just went where the colors joined. And I just made a very small pattern, a rough pattern back and forth around where my leaf was. Right? Kind just of like a stamping on it. Uh, Catherine wants to know if you use a dehydrator, if you need a dehydrator for this. Um, you will not need a dehydrator for this project as long as you're willing to do your prep work ahead of time. But the dehydrator is great if you want to quickly pop out these centerpieces. Um, as you could not use a dehydrator for this project if you were going to make your flowers in modeling chocolate. If you're going to do it in the series that I just talked about where you drop it in right while it's wet so it secures better and it's not up off the cookie so far, modeling chocolate can't go into the dehydrator. So you have to weigh that out based on the size of the order and how much you're charging for the order on what you might want to do. And can you guys see this rogue nonpareil right here? So my icing is still wet enough. Don't try to um, pull that off with tweezers and all that. Just tap that in and just tap it down into the cookie and hide it. No one will ever know it's there. They're really soft candies and you see it just disappeared. So lots of fixes without scraping all the way back to zero, right? 
Awesome. All right. So that's it for me today. Does, did anybody have questions? Cause I couldn't see the thing was rolling pretty fast for me. Um, no, I think you're pretty good. Uh, there, there was just comments that, uh, that, you know, for leaf cutters and stuff, they were just adding to it saying that their Wilton offers some leaf cutters and stuff. They do. And you guys, they have some great prices right now on the big sets of the fondant plunger cutters. So if you wanted to use your impression mat to do a whole bunch of this, and then line up your cutters, you can, because you know, there's a little bit more specific leaf to a hydrangea flower versus a rose versus a daisy versus the dogwood tree flower leaf rather. Um, so they do make different things for that. But I had a, a, a picture sitting here um, right beside where I was working last night. So I was able to just hand shape it. But if you're not comfortable doing that, that is another super easy fix. I do think it's worth getting this mat, though, because you can make all kinds of different size leaves, just like what would actually be on a dogwood tree using the same veining. So, again, it keeps it all looking in the same um, in the same. I was going to say vein, <laughs> but it keeps it all looking similar. Right. So um, your project will match up nicely. So, um, Julie, she explained how she did the non pareil. You can uh, catch that on the replay. She explained it, but it's basically she colored them herself to get that color. Yes, because so, I wanted them to match. So these are just colored with regular food gel left out on parchment overnight to dry. So Anne-Marie got her AliExpress order all at once. So she says it's Christmas at her house. Oh, and guys, if you want to make particularly small flowers, remember the, the video that Mara and I did where um, where we did Dollar Store and AliExpress and I bought a bunch of these, six in a pack for a dollar. These are great to use to, to let your little tiny flowers dry and a cheap alternative. So um, hold on a second here. Catherine is saying she's, um, she's worried about the fondant. I don't know if people will like to eat it. Well, actually, I put a link in there for some fondant for you for satin ice, which I think has a pretty good flavor of the ones that are on the market. I don't mind that one. But when I make these for orders, I actually make marshmallow fondant, which tastes great. So Fabio wants to know, is that on Amazon, that mold? Yes, this mold is on Amazon. Um, and I think if you put in, um, it doesn't have, it's not named, you know, like most of their molds are named. Um, and you can't find it by the item number. So just put in floral fondant mat or fondant press from Wilton, but make sure you put Wilton because it is a Wilton mat and it will pop up. So Lou, um, not all fondant reacts well to being uh, put in wet uh, royal icing. Satin mm -hmm. ice tends to just, it dries. It, it's like all products have a different recipe. That's why they're all unique. You find the one that works for you and satin ice, reacts well to being added to, to moisture. Whereas mm -hmm. I've used other products myself where right. I woke up the next day and my things were all warped Wilty. and disgusting. Yes. Yeah. And also um, uh, I, I have done the same project with hot hands modeling chocolate that works well, but that's the only one I've tried this project with in the modeling chocolate, the hot hands, whatever the content and creation of it is works well and marshmallow fondant works great with this project i did yes, not you can flavor fondant mm -hmm. and you can actually buy some uh fondorific actually has all kinds of flavored yes, fondant. already flavored and they're pretty good too i think i did put a link for that in something that's coming out next week because i found a buttercream fondant that i ordered in and tried it and it oh, yes, you were, great. you were researching that so yeah. if you guys are coming, just arriving to the live stream, you can rewatch Amy's uh, demo. We and save Marlin. the live streams to the YouTube. to the Facebook and YouTube, so you can rewatch it. And uh, the supplies for the project are available in the the coffee here. Let me add yeah. the right here. If you want to find the link, that's where we add all the supply lists yes. for the projects that we do. So you can find that there. And, and the only thing that's not on your list today is the is the marker. Oh, the marker. Okay. Yeah, the, that's the only thing I forgot to put on your list, but it's on last week's list. And again, a little reminder about Amy's class. That's on um, the 16th of May. Mm -hmm. It's a free and class. So go follow her on Facebook yes. so that, or on Instagram too. Are you going to be... Uh, Posting I, your I'll be using there. StreamYard to broadcast, so it'll be on YouTube and Facebook and then on their page as well. But it's completely free and it's a super high level project, so it's a great deal. And there's going to be, I think there's like 16 other instructors. 
Uh, Sharon, I was actually, uh, Amy and I were reading about the new buttercream fun. It seems to be a new product. We both didn't really know about it. And if you right. look at the ingredients, they're not ingredients that would be susceptible to drying. So I, I think that maybe it's not a product that's ideal for, for kind of pre-made decorations right. that would be, um, that would be dried. I think that just different products have different applications and that right. might not be the ideal product for pre-made yeah. uh, decorations that- And I'm, I'm not time. sure that buttercream fondant would be great for flowers on a cake because it looks like what's in it, it would be another situation where it might wilt, like how we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, I think it's probably uh, the solution. A lot of people didn't like the taste of fondant. So maybe it's like mm -hmm. to cover the whole cake and right. give it more of a buttercream taste. And right. then the decorating elements you could do in other, um, like, you know, you have two buckets and you use it for accordingly, depending on the mm -hmm. thing you want to make. All right. Don't the time, awesome. Mark. I went so over. Oh, that's fine. No <laughs> problem. Here, let me turn on my, my thing. Here is it on there. So let's do a little bit of a it. pair again. So I'm just quickly going to, Yes. show you guys this is my class that i'm doing on may 1st so this is a live class and this is a puzzle platter so you can see here all the cookies come together and make a pretty uh, flower so you can sign up for that class on global belly it's only 35 dollars, right i think it's 35 dollars, and it's live right. so here's the link to sign yeah. up and yeah i hope you guys will join me it's a live class we can hang out and decorate and have a visit it's always fun instead of just watching you guys get to participate and 35 dollars is affordable yeah and it's super handy because you can chat live right i think it's via zoom it is so we mm -hmm. can actually like have a bit of a chat and a visit and questions get answered quickly yes and um people really liked my live uh, last friday i did this so yes. this is um for this like it was a version of this 3d mother's day project so you'll find those in the coffee shop if you're interested. Uh, people really seem to like that as a Mother's Day kind of idea. And it's fabulous because you paired it with the shoe, so it was a whole accessory set. Well, that's it. And the animal print, I mean, it's still, I think it's one of those timeless things that people, yes, you know, always kind of like. So today I'm doing... I'm doing strawberries, so. Oh, I, you guys, I only got a sneak peek of the cookie on the right. Look at those. So this is um, just a, a variation of what it is that you can do with uh, strawberries. So here, let's just quickly, I did a little Google search. So here, okay. some, some little sayings. You could make a, a little card or you could write that on the cookies here for Mother's Day, baby shower, just, you know, sometimes for a birthday, just maybe you have somebody in your family that's a bit down, just some cheer me up cookies, right? Like it's a uh, spring, I mean, strawberries are the first fruit of the season. And yes. I think they're, when you get your first flat of strawberries, it's like actually summer's here. So they're yes. always nice cookies. <laughs> well, when we lived in Florida, February was the time and you would get the hugest, just the most beautiful strawberries. That was the time for the strawberries. Mm -hmm. So here, this is a pre-recorded because they needed to dry, but this is the template that's in the coffee. So I have them in two sizes and on the supply list, I've actually linked the red powdered food color. And it's just because a lot of people have issues with the bleeding. So the mm -hmm. powder, I think is a lot less susceptible to bleeding. And you can see, look at that red. It is gorgeous red. It actually, uh, cute, like uh, I made it the day before, and so it had time to kind of, uh, what's the term, uh, um, what's the develop, the color uh, develop. Yeah, the color develop. And then it was much darker day two. So it was just, let me just play it again. So it's basically like little kind of candy corn shapes, mm -hmm. and the icing heals over very quickly. So I just let them crust over, and then I took a green icing and basically did kind of like three stems coming out the top, but it's important to do the other two that you're gonna see me do because that's what secures the top green stem to the strawberry. So hold Mark, on, watch me do it. Could you and put little black nonpareils on here? I didn't, I didn't. So here is the three stems you see. So that's like the little top on okay. the strawberry. 
And so that, and then the two come over and that's what kind of tie. It's just yeah. when you're making royal icing elements, if you want to make sure your colors don't separate as you're lifting them off, that part is important. So beautiful. And then the Easter basket cutter, we find that, that like that's used so much for Easter, okay. but it's a really nice shape for like, um, just kind of gardening or um, like fruit type things or just flower baskets. You don't have to just use it for Easter. And here I'm just adding a quick little spackling of royal icing to where I'm going to be kind of decorating. You can leave it open if you don't like to have the icing there, but I do like a little bit of icing, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful. I love the how, what you did with it there. Yeah, it's just to give it a little bit more. So here, do you guys are liking them? Can That's I, good. Can I click comments? I'll put comments up unless you're going to show another Take video. Care for me, all right. I know the color is not Master Elite. That is Americolor. Americolor also has, and you'll see there's there's uh, I, I didn't check the quantity, but if you want to test out powdered, um, the platter is that's. That's like supplies, the $49. That's like a, a bundle where you're getting all supplies. The class is is something else. And so um, that's, where she, where's the comment? Judy? Oh, here, right here. Yeah, so, so you have a, you have a box. There's, there's one bundle on Global Belly. One is a supply bundle and one is a class. So make sure you're picking the class, okay? Okay. There's, there's a, but like, if they get the supply bundle, does it go with that particular class, the platter you're doing? You can, I did work it around that you could. Okay. Because the thing about that flower platter is you could make it in infinite colors for infinite occasions. It's okay, a fun good. platter, you know, okay. birthday, Mother's Day. So now um, we're going to, I guess, pick what cookie I'm doing because there's no time to be doing all these cookies. But I wanted to Sorry, just, guys. No, but that's not, that's, I hadn't anticipated on doing them all. I thought that we'd do that today, let you guys pick. So because um, Zoe of Zoe's Fancy Cake live streams at the crack of dawn because she's in London and she always has the, the audience viewers really she says, oh, what color should I do? What this should I do? Yes. And it's a bit trickier for us to do that. So today I thought I'd do that. So which cookie would you guys like to see? I've got all three here ready to go. And which one would you like to see get decorated? The dress? Um, let's see. We're saying we're seeing dress. I'm saying dress, dress, dress. Okay. Well, I'm just going to talk through so for the others. So okay. this one here, as you can see, it's the basket. This is in the coffee. Um, like the listing here for the $2 today is the basket. So I had shown basket weave previously. So this is with a stencil so much faster and then the little royal icing berries. And here's a little B royal icing transfer that I um, added. Oh, this Mar, is we're, having, we're having a war between the dress and the basket. The dress and the basket. Yeah. So we'll do the dress quickly and maybe we'll, we'll have time. Okay. And then this one here, is uh, the plaid that's also in the coffee? Uh, I have a listing for the plaid, and I do like that baby blue with the green and everything. So spring, it just screams picnic. And I don't know if you can see these are little wafer paper flowers. Oh, for I'm the so little... proud! We worked in wafer paper too. <laughs> yes. All right. So it. here, let's pop this on. So when you're airbrushing, only a portion of your cookie. The safest bet to not get airbrush on the area where you don't want color is to simply not is, have it there. Mar, is that cutter on your supply list or did you take a cutter? So, and so this cutter, I've, I've posted a few of this, this particular company. So this is Eprendale or E. Crandall okay. and they do copper cutters. I love copper cutters. Yes. It's kind of like, I don't know. There's something about them. I just love them. And so they are pricier, but this is by them. Okay. And I did list it, but I'll add it later. If you guys are interested, I'll put it in the video description box on the replay. Okay. And yeah, I have a well, ton. You, for you what didn't amend it any, right? That's the actual shape of the cutter. That is the shape. They okay. make beautiful cutters. They make beautiful cutters. And yeah, they're like heirlooms, you know, they're things yes. like you pull out your box of cutter, uh, your copper cutters. It's just like one of those. Anyway, so this is a layered stencil. When I make my layered stencils, I put a reference point and I'm just going to show it quickly here. If you can see it, there's a triangle there and it's pointed out. So the triangle is going to be at the bottom 
pointing out to the right so that you can kind of like know how to position the next layer because there's a bit of a puzzle that you're doing right when you're yes and so look guys she's using is, her magnets her magnets that are handy yes and the cookie's too big to fit in my holder so that's why i'm using the magnets so mara i guess we're just really we're known for going over so they're just starting to adjust their time to go longer than an hour so they said take your time oh they know we're they know we're going over. They know us. So we're getting a bad reputation. No, it's a, that's probably a good reputation. They're getting an hour and a half almost every week for free, right? <laughs> that's it. I mean, it's hard to go into great detail and offer anything. It's got to be really super like light, you know, yes. especially for the two. Oh, my needles pulled back. Did you see that? And this guys is why you test on the side. That's good. That's thing. right. That's in good habits here. So here's my wireless airbrush and this is in the supply list. And when you're airbrushing, you know, you can just do full coverage, but the thing that it allows to go into a little bit more, you can go close, you see, and, and actually like add shading to your elements. Oh, and if you so leave pretty. a bit of white, actually gives it a look of like rounded and shiny instead of just doing a flat, full, mm -hmm. full coverage. That's beautiful. What red is that, Mar? This is super red. Okay. And so I'm is quite it our color? No, this is Chef Master. This Chef one. Master. Okay. And somebody, somebody asked today if we had favorite colors, and I told him I think if in the last eight weeks we've used colors from almost everyone. Yeah. What I what you know the thing that I try to do is I have a lot of Americolor so that I can match my gels to my um to my airbrush. Right. Right. And so I, I'm really darkening the edge and then the overspray spray goes to the middle. And I can see here if I, if this wasn't live, I'd take my airbrush to the sink and wash it because it's spitting a bit. Mm. But the joy of live, we're just going to hustle. It kind of works through. for the strawberries. I'm sorry, what were you saying? It works for the strawberries, it's I think. Working, yeah. Right. Oh, and someone has a question. Miss Cynthia would like to know, um, she'd like to airbrush silver but the color is not coming out in silver. Any suggestions? Are you yes. going to be doing a, a video anytime soon with that? So here's this, I'll tell you right now. So here's the, I work like this, okay? My needle is exposed. So you can actually, the, this is like a triangle, basically. The needle goes in and seals the hole. So if mm -hmm. you pull your needle back slightly, the hole will be bigger. And so that's what I do. I basically pull back the, the, the needle to give a little bit like of a wider opening here. And that's the trick to working with kind of metallics. Mar, do you need to plug in? I think you have a battery light flashing. Oh, darn it. Yes, I do have a battery light flashing. I'm going to switch out my battery. Okay. Are you doing some talking to Okay. So guys, if you have time today, pop over to Global Belly and check out marlin's live class it's only 35 dollars um you're going to learn how to do that whole fantastic flower pat pattern um platter that she showed you earlier which if if you're not familiar with doing platters that in particular is a great platter because um okay. it's got multiple sizes of cookies so the kids can take a different size cookie than the adults would take or someone that just wants a little sample can grab those little flowers but that's going to be a live class um, $35 for that. Then there's a separate kit up there with supplies for 49 and a lot of other goodies too. And then of course, make sure you go check out the Kofi site today um, for your donation. There's, she's got it packed full of stuff today for, to do this project. Thank you for noticing. I didn't, I, I had changed the battery. I did remember to do that. And I guess my battery has a shorter, you know, sometimes when they get old, they stop kind of being as, um, Having as long as you know? <laughs> All right. So, so now, now they're is... gonna they're gonna have to sell cookies to be able to afford the supplies. That's kind of how everybody's side hustle gets going. Yeah, well, that's it. So now my triangle, I'm looking at my triangle to figure out how to put my thing. The triangle is very helpful, I have to say, yes. to kind of know. And now I'm able to rest my my stencil down. And again, I'm weighting it down. I'm looking at the berry and aligning my stems so that they kind of meet, you see? This was inspired by, I don't know if you guys follow like the internet, but last year, I think it was, there was a strawberry dress that went viral. 
and all the social media people were wearing the strawberry dress and it was yes i remember that and wouldn't this be a great apron cookie yes yes i've done it that way too and oh my thing moved so i you just want to make sure obviously that it's in the right position so pretty but if you're not right on it doesn't you know it's not a huge deal and now this is more of like a full coverage situation you don't have to worry about gorgeous on the stems it's gorgeous Straw yeah. strawberries just are so beautiful and they look springy i'm running to the sink because okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should have had gloves for you too yes oh so guys, don't forget to go check out both of our, I'm going to see if I can find it real quick while she's rinsing her hands and I'll drop them in real quick. Oh, well, there it is. So you can see here, I'm going to, I did not really love, and I don't know, it's up to you guys, the layers there. I didn't love the leaves on the dress. So we're going to leave it. Oh. So there's a third layer for the leaves, but it's entirely up to you. And then the marker, like the black outline is a marker and that's in the supply list. And it's a, it's um grip color it's called and then very easily you're outlining your berries with this marker and you can decide if you want to go you know all the way around or if you only want a bit and i'm doing the seeds and it's oh, I, I, that's why you didn't do the nonpareils on there i didn't like it with the nonpareils i've Was done it too bumpy past. too bumpy I don't know. They were too big for the size. That's so beautiful. And so this again is like the rubber duck. Remember we did the duck there. I did the kind of the yes. same thing. And this well, is what is this technique actually called? Does it have a name or is it just drawing? Right? And I don't remember. Somebody wrote me actually asking about it. And I was like, what are you talking about? There is a name and now I can't even, I don't, I don't know what it is, but maybe we can drop it in later. I couldn't find it. I tried to find it last night because I thought it was a bit more than just drawing on the cookie. I thought maybe it had somebody an knows and can educate us in the comments. Yes. Yeah, so let's see if anybody has that info over there. If you know what this is actually called, there's a lot of times we just start doing these things and we don't really know. Um, we don't really know if it has a technical name. So we name it, right? Exactly. So this is, um, that's you know, quite long to do, but it does make a difference. And I mean, if you're doing gift cookies, like for your mm -hmm. mom or somebody like that, you know, these are the steps you'll do this. I don't know that I would do this on an order, you but know, it would be great for a feature cookie, or if you were doing something really special, you know, and that was somebody's birthday theme to have a few of these. It's beautiful. Yeah. Like I mean, you don't want to be doing a hundred with the marker. Yeah, and it's so crisp, Marv. That red with that particular, like that green. What green was that? That's just leaf green. Leaf green and super red. And then she's outlining with um, what did you say that pen was again? It's a drip color marker. Okay. And they're one of the only ones that are completely edible of this fine, fine, fine tip. Love it. I love oh, it. Oh, if you're airbrushing. Uh, make sure you put a paper towel or something on the cookie if you're planning like if you're going to rest your hand so that you don't smudge it because if you have the slightest bit if you tend to right. perspire or whatever you're going to get this all over so on the other one what i did is i did three dots of black just like this oh i love it do you think that technique is called illustrated it might be. There was another name. The girl said it, and I don't remember even like the comments. I get messages all the time, and I couldn't find her message asking about it. You know, right? So I, know, I know it's more than outlining. Um, illustrated sounds closer, but that's still not the one that I initially heard. So this here now, I'm using a piping tip, and is it dry? Is it not going to cooperate? I had it all on a on a wet paper towel, and it's. Of course, the icing is not coming out. Roundhouse silhouette? I don't know. We'll find it. We'll find we'll it. Find but you guys know where we're, we're talking about out to do, use it to do outlining in detail. Most people do it with wet on wet icing that I've seen. But I mean, mm -hmm. it's just so long with the airbrush. I mean, when you talk about being more efficient, it's just a question of efficiency, right? You want to be able to... to um, work quickly all right so this here i'm gonna 
try to muscle through. So this is a piping tip 31R, okay? This is PME. Okay. The smallest pedal tip that I own is by them. And I'm just adding a ruffle here on the edge. And I don't think I've ever seen one that small. You said PME 31R? Yeah, it's tiny. And wow. you can see here, I'm Look adding this tail. Yes, and again, yeah, it's pricey. You're gonna have a bit of a coronary when you get to the Amazon. Right. But it's one of those things, it's one yeah. of those things that you don't have a hundred of them and it's a detail thing. And right. It's really necessary when you're doing cookie work to have a few a few tools like that. They do cost a little more, but they're really worth it to get that specialty look. Exactly. And so here, this is dry. I'm coming in now. This piping tip is much more affordable. It's a 102 narrow edge down. And this is how I'm adding now the little kind of a ruffle to the edge of the little kind of uh, top part of the dress. Perfect. So narrow it's edge down, she said. Yeah, just an S. And then here, same thing, an S motion on each sleeve. Make sure you rotate so that the narrow edge is out on both sides. Wait, are you saying out to like the edge of the sleeve or in? Like the narrow edge is out. Okay, got it. And, the dress. and Mar, they're asking if you can show them the, that tiny tip that you just did. The yeah. PM. Can you show them what that looks like? Well, is it too small to show up on camera? Where is it? The 31R. Oh, it's very small. I mean, and my I can't like adjust the camera because I'm going to get all blurry. But it's right. a 31R, and if you type in Google, go right PME piping tip 31R, okay. and you'll see it. It is not like a, a pedal tip where normally, like, it's fat and narrow. It's ex it's completely the same. Uh, yes. It's yes. got no, like, kind of narrow edge. It, look, it looks like a straight jimmy. Like That's a straight. right. That's right. And so here I'm just trimming. Right. Just on this, I'm just cutting a little, little bit off, okay? Just to get it straight. And that then it's so beautiful. Same icing, mm -hmm. not waiting. Same it's, color, but different consistency, okay? Is that a Wedgwood blue? No, this is sky blue. Sky blue. Did I already ask you that? I'm sorry, I might have. No, I, I don't think you did. So now I'm just filling in the, the top of the dress. Mm -hmm in this blue that matches the ruffles mm -hmm. but you see now i'm getting this kind of dual finish right i'm getting a mm -hmm. smooth finish and a yes. ruffle together and they kind of tie in perfectly oh so beautiful fabiola and, loves it and i'm going to be dropping in the wet icing uh one of those strawberries mm -hmm. that i made one of my little royal icing Perfect. strawberries. So you can buy some of these elements, mm -hmm. but if you're, let's say you were making stuff and you had red icing, well, you could make a few strawberries and have them to put on your future projects, you know? Let me grab a tweezer just to be meticulous. <laughs> so I'm just putting it on the oh, slide. I love here. it. And so it's important to add that while the icing is wet so that you can press it in. Mm -hmm. If not, it's going to be sticking out quite a bit. You're not going to get a nice fuse because of that ruffle. Right. And then here I added, and do I have them here? So you want to just touch the surface of the icing just to make it sticky, your needle. And then you can position, here are those like white nopare like you were using. Yes. Using that as buttons. That's my favorite um, trip. Uh, tip that you taught me is wetting the tip of the scribe and then picking up the non -parades. I used to go nuts trying to do those with tweezers. Oh my gosh, yes. Me too. I, I was like, this is too, too, too adorable for words. I love the dress. I would wear it. Um, they are saying the PME 31 R's out of stock on Amazon, but um, look where? at so she's a Canadian seller. How sweet yeah. is that might have it. Look okay. at Etsy. Look on Etsy for a Look seller. And so here, I didn't do it before, but I'm going to do it on this one. You can add that ruffle, the little tiny one, on the neck here. So I'm doing it on the neck. 
Can you guys see the three little buttons that she just put on there with the white nonpareils? Can you and see so it? They have the little, the little ruffle on the collar, the little ruffle thing here. But you want to wait till the icing dries to do the collar or else it's just going to sink in there. And it's not going to so look So beautiful, Mar. And so you can see them here. See with the, all that green? It's, yes. You know, so it's up to you which one. But I kind of like it a little bit like that. It's and that whole thing we keep talking about, right? Knowing where the balance is of, yes. of one more thing is going to make it too much. Exactly. And the thing with this particular stencil, when you're cutting your own stencils, well, you can make the strawberries. I think I would have cut it smaller to make the them strawberry bigger. pattern. Well, yeah, they're a little bit big for the shape of the cutter, right? For okay. the size of the cutter. But it's it's uh, it's not bad. But I mean, I might cut them a little bit smaller. I gotcha. Well, that one at the waistline, everyone thinks that's just too cute, cute for words. The little berry. Yeah, it's so tiny. It's How big would you say that is? Is that like a quarter of an inch? My strawberries. Yeah, they're tiny. That's uh, oh. the there they are. Look and at that, that red is just so nice. And it like you know, I didn't have to put a ton of color in my. Um, in my icing you know so it was I good it. so do so i you do like that brand that brand of that powdered red you it was five dollars the other one i mean to do expect like everything's so expensive when it comes to cake supplies mm -hmm. i did like the price but like i say maybe if i looked at the quantity the price would be similar than that other kind of like the new one that's really hot right now that everybody's buying right uh, the sugar art you mean the sugar art red uh, I don't know who sells it, but the thing is, is also me in Canada, I have a lot of shipping, like shipping's yes. expensive and stuff. So anyway, so it's, it's so gay. It's that, is, that strawberry stencil is in her coffee offering for today, which is yeah. in the ticker at the bottom. So just look there. You can go straight to her coffee shop. Um, she has the basket weave in there, which she's about to show you. She's got the little strawberry template in multiple sizes, the, um, for royal icing transfer, she's got the strawberry stencil in there if you have a cutter. Like she's been providing everything both ways. So you can either print it out and make royal icing transfers, or if you have a silhouette machine, it's got the files in there where you can cut your own. But gorgeous, Mar. Thank you. So um, now when you're stenciling in royal icing, you need to have a completely dry surface. You're pressing now. You yes. could airbrush the basket weave on. That would look nice as well if you'd rather. That's an option. But, and the strawberries, Mar, that you made, they're asking consistency. Would you say that's toothpaste consistency? Um, it's a, it's maybe a little bit thinner because I didn't want to have wrinkled strawberries. I gotcha. Okay. You no, know, but if you're an experienced uh, person that works with icing, I'm just going to show them again here. And if you pipe, you know, in a straight, you know, mm -hmm. like with the pressure and you're not kind of doing little tiny lines right it squeezes out and heals what's, what's your time lapse on that video would you say that healed in about 10 15 20 oh that's at 400 percent. so that's okay. fast but okay. they healed and as you can see i didn't fiddle with them they right. just healed that's the other great thing about doing things like this in particular is royal icing transfers that you not take too much time every time you touch it it's money if you're cooking for a living or cottage baker, bakery, whatever. Yeah. Every time you touch it, you just cost yourself money. So you've got to get the practice cookies down to make everything fast. And if you're doing it, make them in a variety of sizes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not longer. Just do them in at least two sizes. Right. And so here, like I say, I waited for it to dry before. And you can do it in an airbrush or you can do it in... Um, in um royal icing and so and this is the easter basket cutter you guys from the one that she did a few lives ago when, when she did the same the i have a few baskets and so you can kind of decide i think i like it better when it's rounded at the bottom and i tried to make it look like as if it was actually piped on when i drew it and i'm looking for so you can see there's horizontal and vertical lines so i'm looking for the vertical line to be somewhat centered mm -hmm. so that the the you know that it sits right right and when, just, are you going to airbrush it or are you going to scrape it with royal icing i thought i'd scrape it since, yeah, okay because i have the icing here so let me see here at the bottom i think about here so when, when you're working 
hit the love button too, you guys. We want to have good reactions today. I'm just going to hide the top <laughs> because I'm, I don't want to have icing go over here. So, right. you know, you can protect and save yourself a little bit of a headache. Now this is my spatula that I like for like detailed stuff. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, and we solved that problem a few weeks ago. You can get those on Etsy. And then the, the, usually people go really thin with the icing, but if you want to go a little bit thicker, it gives it just a little bit more relief. And so what happens when you work with a thicker icing, when you lift it off, I'm going to show you. Okay. Well, this one actually didn't do it too bad, but what happens is on the perimeter, well, it gives it like a little bit of a raised lip, right? Right. Right on the like edges. So mm -hmm. you can actually lay a piece of parchment paper on it and just let it dry a little bit and then lift it off. And the parchment paper flattens that out. It's, you know, that cement technique that everybody's yes. doing. So it's essentially yes. that. And so now you have to do a little bit of a cleanup. If you're cutting your own stencil, you can actually size the basket weave to be exactly the size of what you want to do. Kind of like on the purse video, you know, mm -hmm. how I had cut this, the animal print to be smaller. Oops, sorry, to be smaller so that I wouldn't have that perimeter right. mess. So that's it. Like if you want to cut it to be exactly perfect, but there's you get your your really quick basket weave. And again, that one could be cut probably a bit smaller if you want it to be a bit pr proportionate, you know, to a small size. And then I've got really cool. stiff icing and a star tip. 16 would probably be the ideal. Is that a Wilton 16? Uh, yeah, but I this is just AliExpress 16. But okay. And so right here on the edge, I'm just doing a star kind of like shell border, really quick. You okay, can and guys, if you want to practice that, a couple of videos back in Mars Co Coffee Shop. She has um, where you can practice your shell borders and some loop-de-loops, my really official term for one of those um, mm -hmm. is in there. And so pick up that template because it's super handy to practice. You saw how easy she made that look. It is not that easy when you first start doing it. And here, oh, I've got a 102, but I would do a 104, depending on your cutter, to have the ruffle. And I do like the kind of like it looks like the basket is lined with fabric. And it's just, again, the same thing as on that dress, oh. an S across, and it just looks like the basket has got a little bit of fabric in it. It's and beautiful. you see it makes it look a little bit fancier. I mean, it's all about the details. You can kind of decide. You edit right. what you don't want to have, right? But it's not so thick that it would make it an uncomfortable cookie to eat, right? I know you always talk about that, like how much royal icing is on the cookie. Well, that's, yeah, that's it. You don't want to have manageable too, too, too yeah. much. Right. I don't have a round piping tip here. Hold on. I don't have a little round tip. So um, don't forget to check out both of the coffee shops today. We've got um, supply lists in there for you. Royal icing template. For the dogwood project is in there with your supply list today is one thing. Um, Marlon's got all of this in her coffee shop today. She's got the basket weave. She's got the strawberry stencils. If you have a cutter so you can cut it, she's got it done as a um, royal icing transfer sheet. All of this is in there. And then a few videos back, you'll find that beautiful um, template to practice your borders. So again, with the strawberries, if we bring this one in, Ideally, you're smooshing in the transfers into the this little um, kind of ruffle. Because I just can't get over how cute those strawberries are. They're adorable. Well, what everything is miniature, right? And so right. you kind of press them in a little bit and then add a few in the middle. And you just do a little dot of icing. You don't need a ton of icing right. to put this type of stuff on. So beautiful, Mark. And again, we had mentioned if you make this type of stuff and your friends aren't that crafty, well, you could have them in for a decorating party and then they do the, you know, you do the heavy lifting and they can feel like, you know, you they feel yeah. good. They feel like, oh, look, I'm a cookie decorator too. Yeah. So, and anytime you get them interested, right, you just created someone else to cookie with, which is part of the fun. Yeah. The vine. So I'm um, just adding. Thing, the, the ticker at the bottom has the links to our coffee shop, but I'm sure when we're done, we can put in the comments a live link. Exactly. A link. 
So here I just added like a wiggly line around the, the handle. They don't really grow like that, but I just thought it was cute, you know? And Mar, all of this is going to be in your Facebook school and in your um, Patreon, right? No, I don't think this is, this is, uh, I just can't, you know, keep up now because, okay. you know, before I was doing stuff just for the group. Now there's like live stream stuff. So this is live stream stuff. This is going to be so, in the coffee shop then guys. Exactly, okay. Exactly. Exactly. So now here, I just want to show the leaf here, a big one. So you can see, I've got the small piping tip in. So gorgeous. leaves can be done in so many different ways, but this here, you can see they're quite rippled and that's just by bouncing. So you start squeezing and as you bounce, you see how wrinkled and it just mm -hmm. gives it like the strawberry leaf. It gives it like a pleating on the edges. So pretty. So you're bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. You need an icing that's going to hold mm -hmm. in my so that that bouncing holds there. You now, see? did you like doing those ahead of time as transfers versus just doing them on the cookie? Or was that just kind of the practice I, one? That was my concept, but it didn't turn out. They didn't look nice uh, added after. Okay. So leaves, it didn't work. The leaves, though, added after are a great way to hide anything, too. Yes. So then you can just, you know, randomly add a few leaves. Love it. Don't go too crazy because they're going to hide your strawberries. This would be great as a box set for Mother's Day, Mar. That dress, this basket, and then put one of those Mother's Day sayings on your plaid cookie. Yes, this you would could be a great three-piece set. I can see a little strawberry gift tag with it. Maybe some red crinkle in the bottom of the box. Exactly. You can do all kinds of little things. So here I'm just adding a little dot of icing. Love it. Glue my little transfers on. And you could do the stems on the cookie because they're tricky to um secure right you know the little stem so maybe i feel like you did a royal icing transfer sheet for that bumblebee re recently too that's that the it? onesie um the what will it be um to yes. so that's that's in our coffee shop too and if you're in the facebook school and patreon i think it's also in those yeah that one is and so here i've got a little bit of yellow icing and I'm just gonna add a little dot of it to, here, let me get the, there, now it's flowing. So here you can just add little dots to glue on the little wafer paper. Um, Karen is asking if that's a 352. Uh, I think she's asking about your leaf tip, but that that's the PME 31R, right? Hold on, yeah, let me read the number off of my, my uh, thing and I'll tell you. Okay. Jennifer had to go to her hair appointment, so she's now in the car listening. Uh -huh. I hope your hands free. Yes. So <laughs> here's a beautiful little wafer paper flowers. Yeah, that's an eight uh, millimeter, and that's on the supply list. That when I did find it, is that with a punch, Mark? It is a punch. I have it. I'll show you guys. It's so cute. And so here I've just got my little wafer paper flowers mm -hmm. and I added a little yellow middle to them. And at first I had adhered like with a green icing, but you could actually see the green coming through and I didn't like yellow. it. So that's what they look like. And I'll show yeah. you the punch. It's very, I have a few. See this one here is kind of like um, cherry blossom. Oh, that's so cute. I, I have to turn that sideways. Hold on a second. Look at how tiny that is. They're very small. And, you know, look around. The one I found on Amazon was $2, $2.50. Some people are selling them $12. They're not wow. worth, I got mine at the Dollarama. They're not worth $12. Wow. They're worth three, $3. I'll accept. $12, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so this is wafer paper here. And you just, I'm upside down so I can kind of see. And I you literally, can actually, I, I've never seen a stamp that small before. Oh, well, no. So no, I'm going to have cookie. to look for that one. Well, it's cookie sized. And Beautiful. so you can cut through, I'd say, two layers of wafer paper, but don't go thicker than two. Okay. And then you can just kind of go quickly. And if you're going to color them, color your paper before you punch. Don't right. try to color these miniature flowers after they've been punched out. You're going to go Hi, crazy. Joseph. So glad you made it today. And there they are, you see? And you can yes. pick those up with the tweezers, really. They're so small. 
that they they are tricky to handle and position. This right. is a pleaser so that I got like that. You'd never get that level of detail, right? It's so no. tiny. No. Be, it would be killing you. And and I mean the thing is is they they squish really well into the icing and it just adds a nice little detail to the to the cookies, you know. So Mar, we have two things now. We're um great enablers and we go over. <laughs> Whoopsie. Somebody's mad. No, I think someone just hit something. That that popped up a long time ago. So that's it, guys. So the other one, the plaque, is essentially, you know, a version, a version of it. Mm -hmm. And um, here you can see if I just show you this one here, I curved my line. See, I went around so that the mm -hmm. strawberry was hanging kind of downwards because stra yeah, strawberries yeah. hang. And then I added a few of the flowers. And this I had from a previous thing, the bees. I thought that was cute. And you could write a little thing, you know, a little message. What did we yeah. say before? My messages that I had, where are they? Um, little sayings here. Your berry, the, the berry best mom. Life right. is short, make it sweet. I love you very much. I mean, just, right? Mark, can you get those punches on AliExpress? Is that where you, you saw them? Can. Okay. The, the only thing that I've seen on AliExpress, though, which is I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing, they're <laughs> only sold in lots. So you're well, only going to be able to get, like, the leaves and the this and the that. Like, it's... it's but it's, it's so cheap. It's great. If you don't want to use some, just pass them on and make a cookie friend. Exactly. So they don't... I didn't see them really alone. But I got oh. mine at the Dollarama. Hey, by the way, did Jeremy tell you he wasn't going to be here today? I've not seen him. Was yeah, he, he was hurt? there for you. He was there for you. He It's his anniversary today. Oh. So he was running around, I think, with the missus. Okay, cool. Well, happy anniversary, Jeremy. And, and so no, that's it. No. <laughs> Those are gorgeous. Where's the dress? They want to see the dress. Oh, the dress again? Here, let me pull it out. I want to see the dress. <laughs> And you could you could do other things with the dress. Oh. You could add like you know like a ribbon coming down from the yeah. strawberry, kind of curved lines. Oh, that you know? is so pretty! Like it was cinched at the waist. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I love it. And and like just a nice set, you know, like you can have the little royal icing transfer kind of detail. I tried to keep it all to the same colors: the right. light blue and the, that brown. You so know, pretty. Well, I think we had really good springy cookies today, and it wasn't planned, you guys. Where am I here? We right there. This way. There we go. Yep, right there. There. Beautiful. And so, yeah, it's just some inspiration for you guys, and you could work these on to a round. You could the this version here. You could work it onto a round or whatever shape you have. Love and look it. at your cookie cutters. Try to reuse what you have. Like for example, yes. that basket. You could use an Easter egg. You just have to cut the bottom, straighten it out out of the bottom of your Easter right. egg. You could totally make a basket out of an Easter egg cutter. I'm so, and candy corn. You could do a candy corn shape handle if you don't want the big round handle. You, you could. Use, you could. The, mm -hmm. Whatever you have. Oh, you know what? I've seen a cupcake. Oh, that would be pretty too. Especially when you can type leaves. Is, if you put the handle a little bit in from the swirly stuff, you have room to put leaves and uh, flowers and berries, oh. you know? Mar, for us having a day of struggling of being inspired, I think we did pretty good. <laughs> well, I think that they got a lot of info today, so I hope yeah. everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, Paula was saying the same thing. Cupcake cutter for the basket works good. Yeah, it, it's one of those shapes, too, that everybody has. Yes. But we don't use it that often, the cupcake. No, but it gives you occasion to use it a bit. Like I've seen it done with apples. Yes, that's beautiful. Oh, you know what? We should do that a little later on in the summer is do something like this with apples. Or Here, maybe I should do that. Apples is a big crop here in Virginia. Us two apples is big. Yeah. So everybody, the replay will be available for you guys to rewatch. Should you yeah. want to, uh, you know, get a little refresher. On what we, we, might have, we might have just won the award for longest, um, longest Tuesday or Friday. So you and Han and Amber have to have to work on extending it. <laughs> well, forgive us for going long. Yeah, but, thank um, you guys. 
<laughs> yeah, you'll find my templates in the coffee shop here. Let's do one last little. Okay. There it is, Amy's uh, uh, list and uh, the mm -hmm. template for the flower middles are in her coffee shop. And, and make sure in Mars shop you go back a few weeks because the bumblebees in there, the practicing of that shell borders in a different one, but everything on there is fabulous. And the plaid too. I have the stripes mm -hmm. pencil. For oh, the, yeah, that's the right. Plaid. That's right. I and that was a multi-layer, wasn't it? Didn't you do tell yeah, us I you have that twice? That was a multi mm -hmm. here. She Paula forgives us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We enjoy spending time with you guys so much. Well, yes, we look forward to it. I have to say everybody's in a different situation with regards to the current whatever. And I here can't. we're going back basically, you know, we're not it's not we're not seeing the light yet. So right. this is this is like Therapy for, for me as much as maybe for you guys, I'm telling you. So thank you for watching and, yes. and uh, making and us thank you for being here every week. You guys are so faithful. We can tell the names in the comments that yes. it's, a, it's a faithful following group building. We just love it that you're here with us. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, Paula, you're in Ontario. Sending you a big hug. Mm -hmm. Really, it's really difficult. So, I feel for you. So thank you everyone for joining us and I'll be on Friday with um, Hanyelis and Sweet Anne's on Friday and then next Tuesday with Amy. We don't 100% yes. uh, know what we're doing yet. <laughs> no, not yet. I can't, I can't say for sure because I want to try something a little out of the box tonight with what I was thinking of. Oh, she's experimenting. Yeah. And if you want to join me for the class... On May 1st, that would be awesome. You'll find, um, where's where's that comment here? Let me remove that. So you'll, where, where is this block in here? This, okay. So there's the link to the class if you want to sign up. Right. And we'll decorate cookies together. Yes, it's sign up crazy. for that class. I'm excited for that. Oh, it's fun. It's a fun project. I like those because the recipients, um, to get them. Here's a version of a different one I did. You see it there? That's mm -hmm. like another version of the flower platter. There's so I many. I love that one too because it looks like it has a calico print, and I love calicos. Well, it's flowers, but it could be whatever you want. So thanks everyone for watching. We're gonna wrap it up finally. Oh, there's Brian. Hi, Brian. <laughs> Hello. We he's he's saying hello. He came home to babysit the girls. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for Bye, watching. Guys. Bye.